Oh, well, g'day, how are you going? What are you doing here? I didn't know you were going to be here. It is so good to see you today. Now, today, I wanted to talk about why is it that largely Nikon with the Z mount are creating these 1.8 prime lenses, these less expensive lenses, where, say, Canon are going absolutely high end. Why are Nikon doing that? Let's talk about it. Hasn't there been so much noise in the YouTubes, on the interwebs, about Nikon's crappy 1.8 ZS lenses? Lots of noise. And that noise comes from people who haven't used them. And for the people that have, let's say, the 50mm 1.8 or the 85mm 1.8 or even the 35mm 1.8 or the 20mm 1.8, of which I have all of these lenses, then when you have them, you start to understand what Nikon are doing. Today, we're not going to talk about the 24-70 f4 or the 24-70 2.8 or the very, very soon to arrive 70-200 to 200 2.8 because those lenses are ubiquitous. Two of those lenses are part of the Holy Trinity and this is not really where people are, are aiming. Although some people will aim at the fact that Canon's 70 to 200 2.8 is so much more awesome because it's half the size. But from my perspective, it's half the size, but twice as vulnerable for weather and being bumped because it has that extension style system, which I would never want to see in a workhorse lens like the 70 to 200. I, I never want to see that. These are lenses that are out in the field. They get absolutely hammered by all sorts of different types of photographers, photojournalists, wildlife, sports, you name it. Doesn't matter what you're doing. That lens is always in your bag. And I don't think Canon's decision was a good one. Not for a pro who's got to just move fast and work hard. You don't want one that extends and is more vulnerable to dust and rain and knocks. But I digress. We're not talking about those lenses. What we're talking about today is the primes. Those primes that I just mentioned, there's one more prime in the 1.8 range, which is the 24 millimeter. So we've got the 20, the 24, the 35, the 50, and the 85. They are the primes to date. Of course, there is one more prime. It is the Noct, but it sits in its own rarefied air. We're not gonna talk about that today either other than to say it is a proof of concept and the proof is absolutely there in the pudding. That is a groundbreaking lens, period. Why has Nikon made these 1.8 primes? The very first and most obvious reason is they are significantly cheaper than the primes that Canon has been releasing. Sure, they've got a 50 millimeter 1.2 and we've got a 50 millimeter 1.8 in the Nikon. But it's three to four times the price depending where you are in the world. For me, who's a working professional, who's got to slide across gently from my F mount lenses and my DSLR, I've got to do this gradually without having a financial heart attack. Yet I still want to be able to shoot. Finance is a consideration. So I, I've now got a quite compelling set of Z primes. I've got four of them. And those four lenses, those four lenses that I've got are, are close to being the equivalent of one of the Canon primes. So I've got a whole set of lenses that I can pretty much do with anything and everything that I want to do with. And I've done it for the price of one of the Canons. So let me tell you, if I was a Canon user and I was a Canon DSLR user and I wanted to transition gently across I wouldn't want to have to have spent in Australian dollars. It would be something like $12,000, something like that. Probably more to get that same set where I have spent under $4,000. So over 12 versus under four. 
So cost is the very first reason why Nikon have done this. And then, well, you might say, but you get what you pay for, and you do. But here's the thing, the Z glass is very special. I'm not saying the RF glass is not special. I'm not saying that. We're not talking about that right now. We're talking about the fact that the Z glass is very special. When you compare an old F mount lens with a Z mount lens, we're basically living in this world where the Z lenses are so good that they completely outperform the 1.8 primes from F, but they're also outperforming most of the 1.4 lenses from F. These ZS lenses, prime lenses, are optically superior by far. And this largely has come about because of the mount. And Nikon is being able to engineer the lenses in a different way. And because it's larger, they can make these lenses more affordably, but they're still optically brilliant. So again, this is not to say that Sony or Canon don't make optically brilliant lenses. I, I'm not saying it's versus those guys. I'm just saying versus anything, versus F mount Nikon lenses, these lenses are optically spectacular for the price. They're better than 1.4 lenses that in some cases in the Nikon mount are three to four times the price. So what Nikon have done, have created, they've created a convergence how do we keep it affordable? What can we leverage from our new mount? And what can we get away with with a 1.8 lens, which appears to just be an everyday average lens on paper and price-wise, but in reality, it's just not the case. It's giving us more optically, it's giving us sharper corners, it's giving us less vignetting than their top of the range F lenses, not in every case, but in many of them. So why are Nikon doing it? What's the answer to the question? And coming up next week... G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. We finally actually had a little bit of sunshine and that is very exciting. What I wanted to do is compare this. So we still don't have the Z version of the 70-200. to So this is the the latest F version of the 70 to 200, the FLED. And I want to compare that with the kit lens that comes with the Z50. So we have the 50 to 250, which is equivalent to a 75 to 375. What's the answer to the question? These lenses appear to be cheap and actually they're not. These lenses are spectacular. But what falls in between the 1.8s and the Noct? is going to be 1.2s. Next, we're going to see these Nikon 1.2s. Now, I believe they're going to be pretty expensive, like the Canon ones, and someone like me is not gonna rush out and buy four of them. Even if they were out today, I simply couldn't afford to do it, and I wouldn't do it whilst I'm running two systems, whilst I'm transitioning from DSLR to mirrorless. Some people obviously can afford to do it, but I can't. So I'm super happy. For someone like me, it's, it's allowed me to have a full set of lenses, basically. The only one I'm waiting for is the 70 to 200. Other than that, I have a full set of lenses already. They're affordable. I can do a whole lot of different things. And the difference between a 1.8 and a 1.4, which would be my other option to go to my F mount 1.4s. It's a negligible difference. And then at a later time, if and when, pending price, I can go to these new stellar 1.2 lenses. But I'm deep in the Z system. I've already got, I don't know, something like seven lenses and I'm up and running and I'm happy. I would not have been able to do that if I was invested in the Canon mount and getting the RF glass. I think it's super smart and super logical that, to, that Nikon have done this. To me, it's just as plain as day and it's as clear as a blue sky and it makes perfect sense. So for those who want to brag about their 50mm 1.2 and slap it down hard on the desk and show how awesome and manly they are, that's cool. 
But in the meantime, people with smaller budgets, we're getting on with it. And these lenses are optically spectacular and they are delivering so much bang for buck. So that is the answer to the question. This is why Nikon are doing it. So people can transition cheaper and faster into the Z system. Well done, Nikon. I think you've done a great job. All right, everybody, as always, thank you so much for being here. It has been so good to see you. If this is your first time here, please subscribe and we can see each other again. And you can tap on the bell down here and then you get notifications every time I do anything. Please, uh, please share, it makes us all smarter. Please like, there's over 200 episodes you can watch right now if you click on the matter in photography. And that's all from me. Catch you later.